have a dream. What's happening, family? It's your boy, Trap Vision 3D, and welcome to Black History Month. Uh, you've made it to the lifestyle, and I thank you for being here. Thank you for being here for this premiere. Uh, so, check this out. For the next 28 days, you'll be hearing, like, sounds of our culture. You know, uh, you'll be seeing sights. And there's a lot of information that you guys know, but there's some that you don't. Okay, so uh, today we're going to be talking about Martin Luther King. You never know who we're going to talk about tomorrow, but uh, we will be learning some things this month. I may even do a uh, book reading. I may even do that. Uh, but like, yep, we're going to be talking about horology in black history. How's that going to work out? <laughs> uh, but we'll definitely be doing that. Uh, I also have some people scheduled to actually be on the show with me. Um, I have some, I got some stuff, man, some fun stuff that we're going to be doing this month that you'll see that you've never seen on this channel before. And I hope you guys enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys really like tune in and, and, and jump forward and be like, hey, I want to be a part of it. Uh, we got some big things coming up and I will be letting you guys know throughout the uh, month or throughout the week and stuff like that. Um, so we'll have some unboxings. We'll have, you know, uh, I got a special guest coming on to show their craft. So yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be fun. If you find value in this, you already know, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll be notified. So, let's get into it. Did y'all know that Hans Wilsdorf, which is the creator of Rolex, you know he got the name Rolex from, uh, say, the genie whispered in his ear. He was on a double-decker bus. That's crazy, ain't it? I wonder what else he told him while he was up there. But if you're wondering, what does that have to do with Martin Luther King? I'm going to get to it in just a second. So uh, I do want to honor uh, Martin Luther King as well as his family, his wife. You know, uh, they were powerful figures for us. Uh, as a people and as everybody, as the world was watching what was going on, uh, the social injustice, the civil rights movement, as it was moving along or not moving along the way we wanted it to, uh, you had, and Mar MLK is just, you know what's crazy? Is Martin Luther King is just a small fraction of what was going on. He was just a small fraction of a solution or some type of hope, right? So I wanted to just cover some stuff with you guys, man. First of all, Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I know it's a lot of you guys right now in the premiere. You chatting and stuff like that, man. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here, man. Please share this out. Uh, but today, I uh, want to go over something, man. Now, there are a lot. There's so many facts about Martin Luther King. A lot of facts. A lot of facts. Um, I mean, this man has been to jail. Whew, so many. I mean, good grief. I, you know what I didn't know? He was doing his book signing. Something I found out. And just doing research, while he was doing his book signing in the store, this lady came up and stabbed him. Stabbed him. Put him in the hospital for like two weeks, man. Like, dang near hit his aorta, man. I'm like, that's crazy. I mention that is because of all his ways, his peaceful nature, you know. I was, I'm was, i thinking, like, as a man, like, hold up. They, they, just follow me on this one. As a man, all right, he has a wife. He had kids. And before that. You know what I'm saying? He just made up in his mind what he was going to do. He's always been a smart guy, right? Um, he said, you know, based on what I, I read about him, um, he literally excelled in school. Great communicator. We can't argue that, you know? So, fast forward, that I was just trying to find information about Martin Luther King that I didn't know about, and something popped up. There's a few things. And then, just five days ago, I decided to, I said, hey, Ma, have you ever been to a Dr. King rally or have you ever seen him talk? Have you been close to him? You know, and she just happened to tell me. She said, yeah, he came to Chicago back in the 60s. I was like, really? She said, I was there. I was like 15, 16 years old. So I was like, yo, that's crazy. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, and how the story went was she said well, when uh, Martin Luther King came there, he was going around, you know, just talking to people in the neighborhood and stuff like that. And was like, yo, talking to the dailies. Well, man, daily at the time was he had control of the city. And he was like, yo, 
you guys are living in some slums, man. Like, yo, mayor, what's going on? You need to help these people out, man. And my mom was telling me that it's like all hell broke loose. And there's this place called Gage Park, right? I went there as a kid. And my mom, I didn't know that at one point blacks weren't even allowed out there, right? And it was crazy. There was a store that my mom used to go to out there with. And um, I remember just, you know what I'm saying? Like, when my mom's in the store... Me and my cousin be outside, you know what I'm saying, playing or whatever, and we'll walk in and out of the store. No problem, unbeknownst to us, that this used to be an area that we couldn't, like me, my skin tone, like it couldn't walk through there. But she was telling me that she was a part of that, man, like getting hit with, you know, sticks and stuff. They let dogs out on them, and I'm sitting there like, that's crazy. And she told me exactly where he walked at is a place where I've walked before. And I'm like... I don't know, man. It just like it just hit me, man. I was like, dude, because Martin Luther King, whether you know, I, I know there's some people. There was a lot of blacks that didn't like him because he was too peaceful, you know. Uh, I, quite honestly, uh, I give him, you know, what I'm saying applause, man. I, I, I thank him if I could thank him in person, you know, what I'm saying if he was still alive, I'd be like, man, I appreciate what you did for for us, man. But I, me, I don't think I could do it, man. Just like just getting hit and then just taking it. But, you know, civil rights movement was doing this thing, man. But let me get to this. Upon my research, on, I think it was like a couple of days after his birthday, this story popped up on my feed. Martin Luther King wore a Rolex, right? And I was like, okay, it's interesting. He wore a 1601, which is a date just. 18 karat gold, fluted bezel. It's horology, right? So... I'm like, that's interesting, you know, and if you don't, I actually don't have a Rolex. <laughs> I have an Invicta that, you know, kind of mimics a Submariner or um, what about this Pagani that mimics a uh, Daytona, but I don't have a Datejust. Um, it would be cool. It would be cool to have that very piece, a 1601, just because Martin Luther King wore it. But this is where the story kind of irritated me at, was I'm like, okay, now, the story I read, I will give them they do just, they were, like, apparently they were putting out all the information he's done, all his accomplishments, but they was like, yo, this Rolex, though, that man wore Rolex, and I said, okay, you know what, that, I guess that is cool, you know what I'm saying, it was like, if that's a watch that you love, and in history, this watch was used for that, you know, and I, I saw a YouTuber actually tear that article apart. <laughs> and I see where that, that YouTuber was coming from, but then I see on the other end, like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? It's a watch. It's like, no, it's not just a watch, man, because if you know about, you know, um, Hans's backstory, which I know you have to know, like, okay, how do we even get Rolex in this conversation? Hans lost both his parents, right? Lost his mom first, then his dad a year later. He was orphaned at like 12 or 13. He was on, I ain't gonna say he was on his own. His uncle took care of him, him and his, I think it was like three of them or something like that. I don't have all the facts. I just like skimmed through some stuff. So, you know, forgive me for that. Um, but I, I I do think about, I'm like, okay, this young man, like you lost your parents at the end of the day. And then you go on, they say he was good in math and you go on to make one of the world's most known, like most iconic timepieces in the world. There's nobody on this planet that don't know nothing. I think aliens in space know about uh, Rolex. But this is what led to some other conversations that I heard about this story with Martin Luther King. Now, he got the Rolex through the Nobel Peace Prize. I was surprised, you know, uh, honestly, of everything that transpired. Like, every time I dig back into our history and just like, man, dude, getting hit with water hoses, you know what I'm saying, after the boycott, the bus boycott and stuff like that, man, like, Martin Luther King been to jail, get beat on, stabbed, shot at, they blew, they bombed his house, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I thought they set it on fire, but they literally, the report said his house was bombed after during that boycott situation, I'm like, yo, man, that's crazy, and I'm leading up to this one point, yo, this one point, follow me on this one. Uh, Y'all know, man, I, I love doing this. I love talking about watches. I love meeting people that love watches. Uh, I love history. 
you know, and I know I've never done like a black history. I never paid attention. I'm not, hold up, let me correct. I've never applied black history to my channel in this way. You know, uh, I dig my history, right? Uh, because it kind of forged the world to what we know it right now. But there, there's a, t a point in time where as a content creator, man, you are responsible for the content you put out, man. And I have read, like, I listened to this this content creator talk about the Rolex, man. And here, these are not my words, so bear with me. I got this paper right here. Uh, let's see. Okay, just going through the MLK. No, uh, Nobel Peace Prize awarded. Date just 1601. We got that, right? And then it says, you got one shot to make a first impression, right? These, these I'm just quoting. When you're looking down at your Rolex, this gets you the attention that you need, right? This gets you that 10 to 15 seconds of time. You know what I'm saying? It may not keep you at the table, but it's going to put you there, right? This, this is what's being said. And uh, it says, more often than not, your Rolex will get you exactly what you need. It will not, I do that exactly in there, but it'll get you what you need, right? Um, this information that I heard carries on to say Dr. Martin Luther King was in front of world leaders, some powerful men. They say he was in front of Eisenhower, and Eisenhower had the same watch, and, and his constituents was like, yo, check this out. You got this watch, which he was awarded that watch from the Nobel Peace Prize, right? And there's two stories. They said that uh, his constituents, somebody from his staff, bought him the watch. Others say that Rolex actually gifted him the watch. I don't know which story is true. I don't know. Uh, I do know that he got the watch. He liked the watch. They said he was kind of reluctant about getting it because he was like, man, dude, look, I'm out here fighting for uh, for justice for us to be walking through the street with white folk, you know what I mean? And I got a Rolex on. Uh, it's an expensive watch. But see, that's just it. And see, this is where I credit that YouTuber to. I'm like, you know what? Martin Luther King was a powerful man. He was dude in history. And I'm saying not just black history, in world history, he made moves. He made a ripple. Forget that ripple. This man made like a tidal wave, right? And at one point, it just didn't seem like anything was going right. You know, he spent more time in jail than out on the street, seemed like. And I know at one point, you had he had to be defeated, man. Like he had to have a defeated attitude, but like he kept going, he kept going. You know, uh, and and my point is the resiliency of Martin Luther King, not to fight back, but like fight or have militant folks, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, man, take care of these people, man. I'm, I'm sick of put fire on them, like Kevin Hart would say. But going back to my man, it's one thing to be proud of the brand that you like. I don't care what it is. But in this case, we're talking about Rolex. It is it is cool. I, you know what? I, I, can, I can dig it. Because I would love to be like, man, like one of your heroes got on a watch that you had. Like, if you can afford that watch and you get it, like, yo, so-and-so had this, man. That's my man. I love it. But then there's another thing when you say stuff like how things can be. Uh, let me see. What did he say? Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, it was a it's a power tool. This power tool got him the 10 to 15 seconds. It, it, it kind of put people on notice. Like, yo, you look down at the watch and you know, hey, I'm a powerful man. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, and at one part of the message, it seemed like it was more about the watch than it was about the man. So I was like, I mean, I'm trying to give my man a bit for the doubt. But then I'm like, dude, why, if I feel like I got to give the benefit of the doubt, my first feelings, like when I'm initiating right here or what's initiated in this transaction is, yo, bro, are you in love with that watch that much to where you just skipped over the fact that, man, this man's been chewed up, spit out. And then if you say that's all it takes is to, you know, wear your Rolex, you know what I'm saying? Let me see. Uh, I'm on my end statement right here. It says, uh, your Rolex shows how far you have come. That's what it says. And, and let me see, an everlasting symbol of equality. That was on a website I seen. An everlasting symbol of equality. And I'm like, oh, you know what? 
hey, kudos, man. Love your watch, man. Love what you buy. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you spent $20,000 or eighteen dollars or $6,000 on a timepiece. Love that watch, man. But, like, when we talking about black history, black history, we talking about this man that, like, he was moving mountains without even touching them. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes a mountain fell on top of him, but, like, he moved it off and kept it moving, man. But that Rolex didn't save his life. Rolex didn't save his life, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I take that, you know, like a slap in the face, honestly. And that's why I take the benefit of the doubt away. Um, you know, uh, Black History, um, it's not, it's not a, uh, shouldn't be just, you know, 28 days out the year, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, family, right now. I leave that up to you if you want to go research um, any of what I just got through talking about. Uh, if you type in MLK, uh, date just 1601, it will pop up a series of things and you just go have a field day and you, you know, you be the judge of that. Um, if you also put it, type MLK 1606, Rolex 1606, and Google, you'll see the full article of which there is a, it's a pretty nice article, but you know, it does highlight the uh, Rolex. So family, we will return, we will convene, and we'll continue, continue to talk about black history and horology. You know what I'm saying? This is your boy, Trap Vision 3D. My wife is sitting over in the background with her hands messing around with my lights. Get out the picture, please. You causing shadows, you causing shadows. Let me All see. Right. No, we don't want you to sing. That's not history, that's, that's not right. Okay, that's enough. Family. Until the next hey, yo, no, 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 please, 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 put your leg down, what's wrong with you, please. that's not a song called please, family, until the next lightning strike, until the next Black History Month moment, man, y'all be blessed, next. no, Muhammad you, Ali. I'm not doing Muhammad Ali next, Michael Jordan, bye y'all, I have a dream, that one day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal.